So this right next to me here is Splash. Some of you will know him from the Splash server. He is my brother. Uh, we did a stream recently on MC Eternal, the pack that I'm now doing some videos on just to see how they go on YouTube. And Splash will be in streams and stuff from time to time. And we just thought he'd say hello. So Splash, over to you. Yeah, hey everyone. Yeah, I might be uh, joining Kaizen on the old stream like I did the other day. And uh, we might be doing some co-op stuff in the pack as well, like finding some dungeons, maybe finding some dragons. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm yeah. sure there'll be some co-op stuff. Uh, but you're not going to be uploading YouTube videos, but you might join some of my streams and stuff, right? So, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. I'll keep you guys updated on stuff that Splash is doing and that sort of thing in the pack. We can go see his base and stuff. But um, just thought I'd introduce him because he's going to be on the server and it would look a bit weird if like you know, you guys didn't know what was happening. Um, so, yeah, I guess we're done, Splash. You can go now. I'm going to get on with... You Excellent. Know. See you all soon. Where did you even... <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. There's a lot to talk about in this pack, guys. As you saw right there, uh, he's just hang glided off after firing up his slime boots. We're going to jump into all that real soon. Uh, let's get into today's episode. Before we get into today's episode, I just thought I'd get you guys up to speed with what I've been doing off cam. So we have a cow farm at the moment, which is uh, severely overpopulated. We'll be getting rid of all those soon. Also got myself a horse. This was like the whole stream was about getting this horse, mainly because I love the guy on the back who's just, he's got a little diamond in his hand. And I was like, I want, I want a horse that has a little friend when I'm riding around. Uh, so we did that. We got a little farm set up down here mostly vanilla stuff we do have some modded though uh some corn some lettuce and lots of flax seeds obviously the flax seeds is going to give us a lot of string which is very useful uh, i started a shop because splash lives nearby so we're gonna have shops and i was selling storage crates i'll show you what storage crates are in a second um one iron ore each he didn't have iron ore so he agreed to give me two iron ingots per one so my iron is up there uh and we also uh, i made myself a house um use some of the decorative leaves that are in biomes of plenty so the modded leaves to make this thing uh, we've also modified some cobblestone, some birch wood, uh, some glass as well as the floor inside uh, to, to make this little place. So uh, this is it right now. It's pretty basic. One thing that I do kind of like that I want to do more with is this. Hey, <laughs> it's my bed. So this is uh, curtains we have here. It's almost like a little four poster bed um, just to, you know, get nice and snug in there at night time. So that's where I'm sleeping. Uh, we got a little mine going on down there, like a little drop down to the mine. And then through here is our storage, and these are the storage crates. Now, I highly recommend the storage crates, as it happens, uh, if you are looking for early game storage solutions. If we take a small storage crate, for example, it's just basically a lot of wood. But considering the vein miner is in the pack, and you can take down a whole tree in one foul swoop, it's really not that bad. Um, so this is what we've got at the moment. Again, there's some more like uh, cobble and stuff here I've amended, or chiseled, I should say, to be more specific, with one of these. So a little recipe for that is like that. One stick, one iron. You right click, you put the stuff, oh, no, you right click, you put your stuff in here you get options to make it uh many of you'll be familiar with that but i just thought i'd mention it so yeah if you want to take down like a whole tree we're living in a dark oak biome essentially you need to hold the grave key which is the one below the escape button and i can punch this down with just my hand and boom we get the entire tree falling down there you see i've got 36 logs i've got a load of saplings and stuff straight away so that's why i recommend storage crates because they are super useful some other early game items that i've procured myself that i recommend you guys get are these things which are the slime boots and also um if we go into here we have the slime sling now these do require slime so you want to find yourself a slime island or some slime in other ways to get them but they are super useful if we put the boots on right now uh, you'll see here if i hold down my sling hold down right click and you can hold it for varying amounts of time look at the floor and you can shoot yourself off and with the slime boots on you take no fall damage you just bounce around so it makes exploring early game really useful if you want as well you can combine it with a hang glider uh, so we have this hang glider here from open blocks so you need um to get yourself a stick and a couple of glider wings so it's just leather and sticks to do that and you can hang glide around that's what you saw splash do earlier on in the video in the intro there and so uh, it's really good for exploring you just shoot yourself up in the air and you hang glide around so all of that is kind of uh, where we've been to date what i'm going to do now is look to get into tinkers to start off with so we have some tools and things i've started clearing an area over here but i actually want to do a little bit more work on this um, so this up here we're going to make our smeltery up on top of this so i'm going to clear out a bit of an area make a nice workspace for our tinkers and also get the materials together and then we'll come and take a look at that and i'm super excited to get into tinkers it's a little bit of time since i did it so uh, yeah oh, also streams there are streams in this this is important because i'm building my base all through this dark oak sort of forest here and it has streams going all the way through which is beautiful flowing water so more on that as we progress through the pack uh slash home is a thing too you can slash set home to set your home slash dell home if you want to delete it and of course slash set home there now i always have monsters nearby so i can't sleep in this yet there is a dungeon underneath that i need to take care of at some point splash and i will probably do that together on stream if you want to see a stream there'll be a link in the description uh to uh, my channel uh, my twitch channel and also there'll be something on screen 
right now. I just got rid of my inventory just so you can see that even better. Okay, you guys are welcome. <laughs> um, so this is a sleeping mat, okay? So the recipe for this is just one red wool, and it does have to be red, and you can put some leather next to that. You also have the option of a sleeping bag, which is here. So these are portable um, sleeping units, right? And they will not reset your spawn point. So that's kind of useful for when you're exploring um, or if your bed is currently not able to be used. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough of what I did off cam. Try to keep it pretty simple. One final thing, I do have a trash can. If I want to chuck things in the trash, they just disappear. Pretty cool, right? Um, but yes, now I'm actually going to get into setting up those tinkers things so that when we come back, we're going to get into tinkers. I'm super excited for that, to be honest. Well, in order to make our tinkers construct smell tree, what we're going to need to start us off is a load of this stuff, which is grout. Uh, so this is how it's made. Gravel, sand, and clay, all like that. We're going to get a good load of this going on. And uh, we got eight furnaces. We're going to use them all. We're going to smelt up this much and see if that's enough or not. And if it's not, then I will just have to smelt up some more. <laughs> so let's go ahead and put them in here. We are still using the vanilla furnaces. We will upgrade, of course, to a powered furnace at some stage. Um, but at the moment, it, we're not really there yet in this in this stage of the game. It's a bit uh, early game for all of that. I'll also show you the area I've made to place this smeltery down in. Um, pretty simple, pretty basic, um, but it's looking okay, I think. Um, we just have this over here, made a bit of a watery, sort of leafy sort of area here, put down some of the tall grass and that sort of stuff. The streams plugin is really nice. It really makes the water, not plugin, mod I should say, uh, makes the water look quite cool. Um, and yeah, it sounds better too. Uh, and then just like a little staircase going up here, and we're going to basically put it up around here. And I, like I said, we're going to have like a building around sort of the streams is what we're going to do uh, in this pack. So I can build like a little bridge going across here down to there and we can get off, uh, you know, with, with building around there and, and sort of start on that. So that's basically the little like loose sort of plan of what i'm doing right now it's just a case of waiting for everything to smelt i think i'll harvest all my farms probably go feed the cows and then uh, when we come back we'll actually start building the tinker smeltery so one thing that's going to be kind of useful uh, if you're starting out is you can press e and go up here and make a team so you go on my team you can create a team i've already done it which is why you know i could leave the team right now but uh, i'm in a team basically <laughs> um, and what you can do is you can claim areas so right now we can go on here like this and uh, we can claim chunks around here if we want to so that'll mean that it, these chunks are protected they're protected from explosions and things like that um so we can maybe just claim like a big area here around our base to kind of protect it for now maybe like one here as well um now if we've got an area there that we've claimed we didn't mean to simply right click it to get rid of it uh, then you can also hold down shift and click and we can select all of this area that we've claimed and what it's going to do is keep it chunk loaded and you've got the red border around it now if you want it chunk loaded so even when we're off exploring and that sort of thing everything here like our farms will still be growing and anything we've got going on will still happen so that's pretty useful the other thing do make sure you set a waypoint of course you can press uh, J to open up your waypoints to this screen. Go down here, create your waypoint for your home. We're going to find uh, Splash right now, or Sploosh as I've called him, because everybody calls him Sploosh. Uh, and I wanted to show you guys this in action, which uh, I've gone ahead and made myself a hang glider. So uh, if we go into here, here we go. What we can do is we're going to head off that way. So I'm just going to look straight down, shoot myself up in the air, hold the hang glider, and away we go. <laughs> and here we go. We are flying right now. There we go. Majestically towards Sploosh. Uh, it's pretty cool. And here he is. Here's his base. Uh, we're flying overhead right now. <laughs> he is online. There he is. He's got a few things set up here. So uh, yeah, you can right click again to release yourself from the hang glider. Um, hey, Splash. <laughs> um, so he's using storage crates as well. He's also got the drawers on the go. These are good for bulk items. Uh, they can certainly be useful. Uh, I touched on them in my mind colony series. You got the TP here as well. Um, you see if I right click in here, it says you can only sleep at night. You can actually sleep in these teepees. So if you want to go for that type of thing, you can. Uh, this is the Tinker Smeltery, and we're going to be making ours in a second. Splash has already made his up. Uh, we're going to be making ours soon. Obviously, ours is going to look a lot nicer, a lot bigger, a lot better all round than this. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So I just thought I'd mention that. So now while we're over here, that's uh, all of our base is still being chunk loaded. Uh, oh, wait, I was on the wrong thing. Here we go. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool to have that. All right, uh, I'm going to head back to the base now and see if I can get some sleep as it's turning nighttime. We're still waiting for the rest of the... Oh my goodness. These things are kind of hard to control. We're still waiting for the rest of the um, seared bricks. Oh, splash slip. That's awesome. Uh, to smelt up. But once they have, we're going to get into the smeltery. So uh, that will be the next thing this time. I know I keep saying that, but this time it really will. <laughs> so with our seared bricks smelted up, it's time to get into the smeltery. And uh, we've got a few different things that we need to do here. So first thing we want to do is make a crafting bench and leave it in there and turn it into a crafting station so that we can make all of the other stuff that we're going to be using here. So we'll put that down there for now. Some of this might move around later, but that's fine. Uh, now, what we actually need to do, we could have done this without a crafting bench, but we're going to put it in here anyway, is make up a load of these blank patterns. So these are going to be very useful throughout Tinkers. We're definitely going to need that. And one thing we can do with them is make up the actual Tinkers book, Materials and You. So if I open up this book, 
Uh, you'll see here, it gives you information on just about everything you could need. And you can skip through it. You can obviously go like straight to materials. This is probably one of the things it is most useful for. So you can look here at all the different materials and it will tell you like what they do for your tools and things. Um, so for example, this is copper here. If we click on that, it shows you here what it does for the head, the handle, and uh, the extra parts that you can have. Uh, so for example, it gives you bonus XP with this well-established trait that it has. It also tells you the durability and uh, the modifier and stuff like that. So it's kind of useful for that. I keep hearing these really weird things here. I think it's because there's a dungeon below. Uh, as I mentioned before, Splash and I are gonna explore that, but yeah, we, we're way off doing that, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, this book is gonna be like your one-stop shop uh, for all things Tinkers if you need help. And to be honest, we may need that in a minute because I haven't used Tinkers in quite some time. Um, but anyway, once we've got this built up, uh, there's a few things that we wanna make. So I think I know the recipe for most of them. So let's see, we've one of these here, or is it above it maybe? Yeah, there we go. So there's our stencil table. Uh, I think then we can use a log, if we got a log here with a, another blank pattern. Uh, there we go, and that's gonna give us our part builder. Okay, very good. Try and get these out of the way a little bit. Um, okay, so then we need, let's see, a pattern chest, I believe. Uh, yes, here we go, pattern chest will make up you. Uh, and the final thing we're gonna need is the tool station. Tool, oh, if I can spell it, station. Here we go, tool station. Uh, what are we missing? Oh, the just a crafting bench. Uh, here we go. That's why I brought these extra ones. I remember now crafting bench for the tool station. Okay, very good. Um, so let's see stencil part builder tool station pattern chest. I think what we want then is like the stencil putting things into the pattern chest and actually gives you them in order. Here we go. Part builder is going to go there. Move away lizard and then the tool station. There we go. So these are all here connected up. Very good. Now, if we go into these, you'll see that they multi-block as well. So you can go through them like this and use uh, whichever bit you need at the given time. So that's very useful. Uh, so then really on the stencil table, uh, you want to make up all the things that you're going to need here. So things like this would be your sharpening kit. This is your pickaxe head and all the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and make up all those things, put them in my pattern chest, and then we'll come back and look to actually make the smeltery. So when I do tinkers, I don't do anything by half. <laughs> so we made up all of the patterns that you can make. So they're all there now ready for when we want to use them. Not that we will necessarily even get into them all, uh, but for now we have plenty to be getting on with. So the first thing we want to make really are these seared bricks. And these are going to be the sort of foundation of your smeltery, uh, but they're not at all fancy. So so one, two, three would be there, four. I think on the fifth one, or maybe on the sixth one, maybe we want to make this. Go away, Lizard. <laughs> this dude is in the way of everything I want to do up here. Uh, so we want a bit of space in between here and here. And this is going to go five out. So two, three, four, five. Now, this isn't necessary, just to say. Uh, I like to make a five by five base. You don't have to do that. Uh, you can make just a three by three if you would so wish. Um, but I like a five by five, just it's a little bit bigger, it looks a bit cooler. Um, and you've got more options as well for like draining things off and things like that. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna need to make some things. We might need to go back to the storage room for this, but we need a smeltery controller, for example. So this is the most important thing. If you don't have this, essentially you don't have a smeltery. <laughs> so smeltery controller is very useful. Uh, now, if we go at, uh, we can go at seared, there we go. Oh. No, nope, not at seared, just seared, I should say. Um, then you can see all the different things we've got here. So seared gauge, for example, uh, heat the smeltery, a seared window to show into the smeltery. So um, the, the gauge basically can be used as a portable liquid tank. It says there, rec retains liquid when broken. So we're gonna be using lava to power our smeltery. And we have found some down in our cave area. So we'll go down there and, and fill that up and then we can bring it back up. Um, but that's essentially your power source. So we do have some glass. Uh, I may need to change it back to the normal glass though in chisel. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's not currently normal. I've made it different. Uh, so let's see. The uh, This was right here, right? Seared gauge. Uh, now, I, I like to get a couple of these. We'll get, say, two of these, and uh, we'll put those either side of the smeltery controller. Okay, very good. Uh, then we're going to need uh, these things. The seared drains. Now, we want a lot of those. Um, so, well, we don't want 40 of them, but, <laughs> but we do want a lot. So maybe uh, 10 of those for now would be very good. And if we have 10 of those, we're going to need at least 10 faucets, but actually we need more. I'll show you why that is in a second. Um, so let's make maybe 15 faucets. And uh, we could probably just get started with that for a second and then come back down here in a second. Uh, by the way, just to say, this series is going to be quite a casual Let's Play style of series as opposed to my normal, short, concise tutorials. So I hope you guys are cool with that, but do let me know down in the comments what you think about that as an idea. And uh, yeah, it's always good to get some feedback. Uh, okay, so let's just put this down here for a second and let's see what we want. So I think if we put our controller here, so you'll notice where I'm building this, just one off to the side. Um, 
Johnny was blown up by Rocket Creeper. Who is Johnny? What is that? Okay, I have no idea what that is. Obviously, some part of the pack I'm not yet familiar with. Uh, we're going to put these here. Now, these sort of act as windows, but they'll be filled with lava, so uh, they're not really windows in the traditional sense. Uh, then we could probably start with our drains if we wanted to, uh, but I think what I'm going to do is try and keep it nice and symmetrical. So we're going to put this one here, this one here, use this for the corner. Then we're going to have drains going one, two, three, four, and five, like this. And then the same on this side. Um, so, oh, that's not where I want to place that. Uh, so, yeah, seed drains one, two, three, four, and five, like that. Very good. Um, let's grab our axe down to get rid of this stuff. And uh, basically, this is how you drain your ores out of the smeltery once uh, you're ready to do that. So the reason you need extra faucets is because these ones on the corners, you'll see here, act as two drains. There's a drain on either side of those. So that's pretty useful. And uh, we will make use of all of these because why not? Uh, there we go. A load of these in here. Very good. And what I think I might try to do is, let's see the seared window. How expensive are these? They are reasonably expensive, but they're also reasonably nice. So let's see, seared windows, how many could we make if we wanted? We could make nine. Um, we'll just make up five. Okay. The reason being that this is five wide. So if we made up nine, yeah, it's not really doing much for us. So we put that there and we'll go one, two, three, four, five. So just from the back here, it'll look pretty cool. And I think as we develop this, what I might do is make the whole back seared windows. That'll be awesome. Okay, very good. Uh, now this is pretty much ready to go apart from the fact that it is not powered, but you can see we already, even without the power, we do have the animation here where the smeltery controller is now like all fiery. So that means it's ready to go. And this is the stuff we could hold at the moment. So it's got a decent capacity, 200 ingots right now. As we build this up, the capacity will increase and that's what I'm going to do in a second but first we want to talk about a couple of other items that we're going to need uh, so let's clear this out a second and uh, let's see we are going to need uh, I don't know if you think this is casting here we go so basically these casting basins are very useful so I'll make up let's say let's say two of those for now um, again we're going to add to this as we go we put one in there and we'll put one in here let's go like Mr. Fawcett there as well did I uh, yes, on there. Um, so this is if you want to make blocks of material. They'll hold nine ingots and they will turn into blocks, which is very cool. Uh, tinkers, of course, when you put things in, does or double. So if we put one iron ore in, we'll get two ingots out, which is very nice. Uh, the other thing we need are these things, casting tables. And we need a lot more of those. Uh, so at the moment, I can only make eight. We definitely need more than that. So we have to make up some more seared bricks. But these are going to go all along here. Two, three, four, five, there like that. And maybe we don't need more. But... Just for the sake of symmetry, I'm going to make sure we do have more because it's only going to require another one, two, three, four more. So it's not too bad. And then all we do after this is simply using our seared bricks. We go up here like this and we build above it. And you can build this thing as tall as you want, although it will eventually reach a limit where building it taller will not increase the number of ingots it can potentially hold. So this is just how this is going to go. Oh, I fell down. <laughs> um, we're just going to keep building this up, basically, and this is how it will look. Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of how you build the smeltery and these things that you need with it. What I'm going to do is spend a little bit of time building this up and finishing off getting the extra casting tables and stuff like that. Also recommend you have a couple of chests nearby as well. That can be quite useful. Uh, but once I've done all of that and made it look a bit prettier and stuff, we'll come back and actually look at the functionality of this and even get into making some of our early game tools that we need to get some good mining sessions done including the hammer, which does a three by three mining area. So very useful. So yeah, I'm gonna go and crack on with all that stuff. Let's see what we come up with. Well guys, it happened. I'm out mining and yes, <laughs> we have our first diamonds. I am so excited. I don't care that it's modded. I still get excited when I find diamonds. It doesn't matter that it's modded, you know, it's still awesome. Uh, it looks like we got four of them as well. That's pretty good. And some prosperity ore. I don't think I have any of that yet either. Um, so I'm sure that'll be needed at points. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm super happy for diamonds. Now the question is what we're gonna do with them. Uh, on modded you have obviously way more options so we need to be like kind of thrifty with them at the moment i'm just looking for coal because uh, i'm going to make up some more seared bricks to make our smeltery area look a little bit nicer and all that sort of stuff um, but we're getting some cool stuff on the way uh lots of quartz ore which is useful uh that's gonna be useful just for like general things you need quartz for things like comparators or making quartz blocks because they're cool decorational blocks and things like that uh, but also it's going to be useful in uh, when we get into the atomic reconstructor and stuff like that which will probably be pretty soon so yeah pretty happy with the mining trip uh we're also at level 24 now yep 24 um so uh that's pretty cool as well we'll get into some enchanting soon i do have a ton of books from my uh, raids that i was doing on tree my goodness 
Okay, you got to be careful here. I, uh, I ran into a troll earlier, and it was insane. It was like a wither. Oh, there's some coal. Perfect. And uh, yeah, it was like firing things at me and stuff, and I just ran the heck out of there. Because honestly, this game's pretty dangerous. <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to be careful at the same time and not die. Uh, but it looks like we're getting everything we need now. So soon, I will be able to get my decorational stuff done. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> wow, that really scared me. Um, okay, these are not trolls. These are goblins. I cannot sprint because of this. Uh, what I can do is slash home. I know it's a cheat, guys. Get over it. It'll be fine. Uh, so yeah, we, do we have enough coal yet? Not quite. I'm going to have to go back down there, but I'll maybe get myself a bit more prepared, get some food and stuff like that so we can fight them off. And then, as I say, we'll go and get on with the Tinker Smeltery at that point. Just had to keep you guys updated with the first diamonds because that's that's a momentous occasion. In terms of Tinker's tools, there's really not a better material to use most of the time than manulin. So this is manulin right here. And you can see here the durability of this. For example, 188 there, 38 for the extra, and a durability of the head is 615. So this is pretty good. Um, insatiable um, and the cold-blooded attributes are not sort of things that we're going to be using, as you can see here. Uh, but it's still going to be really good uh, as, as like a fast hammer to make and also useful for some other things we're going to want. Now, to make that, you need to combine cobalt and ardite. And the only way to get that, unfortunately, is to go into the nether. So you can see over there, I have made a nether portal. That's that's right guys we're going into the nether and i'm pretty scared about this because i've heard the nether on here is a bit crazy uh so wish me luck i will see you guys on the other side okay here we are we're in the nether um it is definitely scary we have a reasonably protected portal what i want to do is set a waypoint here straight away uh, so i know where my portal is so i can get back to it nice and easily that is quite important so let's save that uh, and now we're going on a bit of a hunt for cobalt and ardite now i can see some cobalt already just over here it's blue so it stands out quite well um Oh my goodness okay there's a creeper who is currently throwing tnt at us um yeah that is cobalt there but we're not stopping for that there's cobalt and ardite here as well we need to get out of here pretty quickly uh that is incredibly scary okay so as i said the nether is scary um we don't need loads of this stuff that's the thing um so what am i doing here i want this stuff right oh oh i thought diamond would do it okay you need a cobalt level tool to do it Ah, okay. So, oh, and that was lapis, not, oh my goodness. Um, so diamond uh, is only diamond level then. You can see there uh, at the top of my screen, it says harvest level cobalt. That means this is not strong enough to do it, which surprises me. I thought it would be. Um, so cobalt ore is the same story. So, okay, we're going to need to find a way of mining this. Let me come back once I have that. Well, oh my goodness, we're going to have to fight this guy to get home. Oh boy, this sucks. I wonder if slash home works from the nether. Oh, it does. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty useful. Okay, so one option we have here is to make ourselves a pickaxe that has the cobalt level. And uh, we can do that by using obsidian. Now, you can put obsidian uh, in here. You can actually use these as inputs by right-clicking with water and lava to make obsidian that way. We have quite a lot as it is, so I'm going to put a few of those in. And I think we can just smelt that down in there. Um, so if we put this in, yeah, okay, this is going to work. So we'll put in like three of those. I think that should be enough. Now, in the meantime, while we're thinking about all that, we need to get back into this thing. Uh, and it's time to build some parts. So we're going to need this one, the pickaxe head pattern. So we're going to grab one of you. Uh, we're also going to need the, uh, is that the tool rod, stone tough tool rod. We just need the normal tool rod for this. The tough one is for things like hammers and excavators. Uh, and also I'm going to need the extra bit, the binding. I think they call this the stone binding. There we go. Okay, great. So what we actually need to do is use these to make casts. So if we right click here, we can place them down on our tables and then we can use materials inside here to make casts. As for the cast, you can either use gold or clay. If you use uh, clay, you'll only get one use out of it. If you use gold, you get more. So I'm going to put some gold in. Uh, and the reason being is, for example, uh, the binding. We're going to use that more than once. As for the pickaxe, we're probably only going to make one of these. And as for the tool rod, again, we'll use that more than once. So we'll put in a couple of clay as well, and we'll see how we go. Now, you do want to be a little bit careful that you're not putting any materials in that can mix together. Otherwise, you'll get alloys forming in here. So for example, if you put iron in, iron alloys with a lot of different things. So I think iron and copper makes bronze, for example, or something like that. Um, you can check all this stuff out here, for example. Like if we go into JI and we hit bronze, let's say bronze ingot, and we look at that, um, it will tell you how to make them. You can look at the casting, and it will tell you there about molten bronze, and you can look through the recipes and things like that. I'm sure somewhere it told you, here we go, alloy in. So, oh, it's actually tin and copper, for example. But there's a, there's a whole lot of things like that, so do be careful. Anyway, the stuff I've got in here should be fine. So we've got obsidian there. Uh, we've got the gold there. Uh, so the gold, what we want to do, if we click the gold, left click the gold, it goes to the bottom. That's going to be what's going to pour out. So it's really important you do this and you get this bit right. Otherwise, you're pouring the wrong things on here. So we're going to use gold for you. I'm going to use gold for you. 
So we let those fill up and then they have to cool down. You get a progress percentage there in the top and as they are cooling down. And then we want to do the same with our pickaxe head, but we want to use clay for you. So clay there. And we've got loads of clay, more than we need here, but we're going to use clay for some other things later on as well. And again, that is going to cool down. Okay, so this is all the stuff we need to make the pickaxe. So the pickaxe head is going to be made out of obsidian so that it is strong enough to get us the manually. That's what we want to do essentially. So we're going to get you pouring into there. As for the other things, um, again, we can look at these materials and there's a whole different like, load of things that we can get if we go back to the materials section that would be useful for different reasons. But one I really like is copper, if I can find it. The reason being is this, well established. You get bonus XP for using that. Um, so durability there of 75 if we use it for the extra and uh, durability of only 23 for the handle. So we definitely want to use copper for one and we're probably going to use iron for the other. Um, iron will just give it a bit of strength and you're going to get a lot of iron as you go through this. It's also magnetic, not that useful here, but it has its uses in, in other things. Um, so that is a 45 for the handle, 38 for the extra so i'm just trying to think what way we want to do this i guess we want iron for the handle and copper for the extra okay so i need to get my uh, copper in there in a second and i need to get some iron in here let's put in maybe like four iron for now and i'll get some copper as well and then we'll come back and pour those in okay the iron just smelted you can see we've got eight ingots there i'm going to keep that down the bottom for now and we use iron for our handle so let's pour that out and now that that's done pouring we can change it to the copper uh, yes, copper, and we'll use that for the binding. There we go. So uh, you can see here the cast around the obsidian head has gone because it was clay. You only get all the one use out of that. So right click, we can pick that up. Um, if we right click to pick this up, we get to keep the cast. So that's quite useful. And then we can pick the cast up as well. Uh, so I've got a bit of a chest over here to store all these sorts of things that we're going to be using. Uh, however, we are now ready, ready, I should say, to make all of this stuff up. So uh, let's go into here. Uh, let's go to our tool station and click on the pickaxe, put in the pieces, and it tells you all of the stats over here, which is very useful, including the mining level of cobalt, which is, of course, what we need. Um, now, the only issue with having it this way is it is going to require obsidian to fix it. Um, so you're going to need obsidian sharpening kits. Now, that it, that can be a slight issue. However, one thing I would say uh, is once you have water um, and you find a big lava lake, you can very easily make a big pool of lava. And because we've got vein miner, uh, we can turn that lava into obsidian and mine it all. It's not too bad, but you guys may want to think about that. It might not be for you. And that's the wonderful thing about Tinkers. It really is a personal preference thing. Quick note on this flower, by the way, this acts as an infinite water source. Um, so I found this purely by accident, but it is quite useful. So basically, if I've got an empty bucket, I can right click that and just get this whenever I want. So you might have a use for that, a pitcher plant. I just wanted to mention it. Uh, we're going to head back into the nether and see about getting some of that cobalt and ardite to make up some really good manual and tools. Okay, that creeper is still there trying to get us, um, and I need my proper pick on me. Okay, is anything following me? No, we're good. So here we go. We can now get the Ardite and the manual in. Now, I'm not going to stick around for too long. I'm going to try and get the bare minimum enough of this stuff. Um, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So basically, we need an equal amount of Cobalt and Ardite, and we need to not die. Those are the two requirements. Having Slash Home here is an absolute gift. It's, oh, oh, okay, I don't know what you are. You're going to explode in a minute, aren't you? Exploding bat. Yeah. Okay, sometimes I think they explode. You see how gunpowder in it. The never is a dangerous place, guys. Honestly, uh, it is a bit sketchy being here, but I just wanted to try and just get a few things together. Um, my goodness, all the pigmen are walking around with these like hammers and tools. Oh boy. Wish me luck, guys. I'll give you updates along the way if anything happens, like if I die, which I probably will. That was a faff, guys. I knew I was going to die several times, but even like I didn't expect it to be that much. Uh, you can see here we got nine cobalt and we've got 18 ardite. What I'm going to do is see how far this gets us. <laughs> because if I can avoid having to go back there for a little bit of time, that'd be good. So let's put nine of each in and this will alloy inside here into manulin. Once that's done, we're going to look at getting a hammer made up. And then we're also going to talk about modifiers. So for example, uh, if we get, where is it? Our pickaxe here in here, we can put modifiers in see we currently have three so for example if we were to add redstone you see our minus d there goes to almost 12 from five so over double and you can keep adding this and it keeps growing with you as the tool level grows and stuff like that um so for example you can put one redstone in there you can see haste there is one out of 50 the mine speed goes up a little bit if we add a lot it goes up a lot and that's just kind of how it works it gives us this haste um, and then you can add like, things like haste two and haste three and stuff so you don't need to start with a tool that has everything you need you can modify it i wasn't worried about it for the pickaxe because we're going to make way better stuff now that we have the manual in um and i actually wonder can i put this pickaxe in here 
No. I think if it's all one material, you could, but because it's not, you can't. So we can look at, you know, upgrading this or doing what we want with it. But um, in fact, our manual is nearly done. So let's get the stuff ready for making up the hammer. So what we're going to need, uh, we need these plates, um, stone large plates, they're called. Uh, well, as in, you know, that's what it is there. We're going to need a larger binding and we're going to need a tough tool rod. Now, once again, we are going to, of course, have to make up the casts for these. So let's put all this stuff in here. And for this stuff, actually, all of it can be made out of gold because this is stuff we might use more than once. Uh, so there we go. We've got gold. Oh, we don't have enough gold, though. So let me see how much I got on me. Uh, quite a lot. Okay, let's do that. Uh, is there anything in there alloying as well? I want to keep an eye on that. I don't think so, right? We've got gold, copper, iron. No, we're all good. Um, okay, so the gold we have got, let's start with maybe this tool rod. Okay. And how much manual did we get out of this then? Um, where is it? Manual in two blocks. So it's 18 ingots. So if I do some quick maths, I think that's just enough for the hammer. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, right. Is that gold ready yet? Uh, there is a bit of gold in there. We can start pouring for this plate here. Let's see how we go. Um, actually, oh, actually, it might not be enough uh, manually. We might have to go back to the nether, guys, which is uh, going to be a sad time if we do. <laughs> but there we go. Okay, so gold here as well. For this one, we're going to need two of these plates. These are the ones that really eat up the manually. So we'll start off with those, all right, and see if we have enough. So I think one of these might be eight ingots. And if that's true, uh, then we're definitely not going to have enough. Yeah, you can see here how long it's, uh, how much is pouring into there. And we can actually check in a second as well. I'll say once that's stopped pouring, we get back in here. Um, one block, one ingot. So I was right, they are eight each. All right, I'm going to brave another couple of nether trips. I might leave most of my stuff here and just take like the bare essentials. We've got a bit of Ardite to be going on with, and I'm actually going to leave that up in here ready for when we come back. So yeah, let's go and get the rest of that stuff and make up our hammer uh, when we come back. Okay, I died several times, but I'm back. <laughs> and uh, we've got a good bit of manual in here, over three blocks now. So the manual is ready to pour out. We're going to get some in there. We're going to get some in there. We're going to pick up our plate oh, and get some in there. For some reason, I think it maybe used to be left click. I thought it was left click to pick it up. Um, it's not. You guys don't care about that and that's fine now uh, the only other thing is do we want to get extra experience from this if we were to change one of these materials i'm actually thinking that might be a good idea however i'm also just remembering i don't have any copper so we'll leave it <laughs> um, but basically this takes a little while to cool you can see here but we build the hammer the same way we did before um, we use uh, one of these but it's a little bit different because you'll see the hammer is not on here right so we have to upgrade these uh, this thing so instead of a tool station we need a tool forge and to do that you're going to need a lot of iron Either, as you can see here, you can use electrical steel. Um, this one here is blocks of zinc. Uh, but I think somewhere there is, if we put in iron tool forge, there should be one, right? Uh, we can use blocks of iron. So that's obviously 9, 18, 36 uh, iron needed for that. Uh, which, let's see how many we've got in here. Uh, we've got seven right now, so we need another 29, which means we need to smelt down another 15 iron, which is why you want to get off and do a lot of mining early game. I actually got... Wait, what? Did I leave it in here? Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> I got pretty lucky in this pack because I found like full iron early on. And I'm actually going to put this stuff back on now. I took it off because I was dying so much in the nether. But we're going to put it back on get a lot of things back out. And I'll sort the rest of this chest out in a moment. Um, so let's get that smelted down. Let's make a tool forge. And uh, we'll place it on the end here or something and uh, move some things around. So I don't think I showed this before, but this is how it looks behind with the window, which is why I wanted a window because it does look kind of cool. Um, you can see all our iron is pouring out at the moment. We're going to make up these blocks here and uh, we'll soon be making that. But yeah, these, these windows are pretty useful. I think they look pretty nice. And if we have some more in the future and this is like all going the whole way up, that'll be pretty cool. Um, anyway, so what we need to make the forge then, as well as these blocks, we're going to need a tool station. So we need to make one of these up a second. Let's do that while we're waiting for that iron to cool down and let's see do i have this in here okay we have to go back to the base which is uh luckily not too far we also need some seared bricks uh which we've got the perfect number which is nice okay great uh, so yeah things are working out it's always nice so we're gonna head back in here just to get our uh, crafting bench uh i've got a couple here but we're gonna make one up because i like the placement i have of them at the moment <laughs> uh, so let's go one two three four of you and we'll make you up like this turn you into a tinker's one and uh then what do we need here? We need to make a tool station. We just go get our iron and we are done. And with the hammer, it's of course going to mine in a three by three area. So it's going to speed up our mining a lot. Uh, it's really just an early game item though, because obviously eventually on this pack, you can have your own quarry and stuff like that, where it's all automated and you're getting all the materials done for you. Uh, but this is still useful uh, in the meantime. So we'll make you up 
and I've moved the chest on the end so we can place you down in there. You see here we now have more options. Um, you could use just the tool forge because like you can still make the pickaxe and stuff in it. I'm um, just for demonstrational purposes we're showing you the progression. So you can actually use this tool station and upgrade it instead of making a new one uh, if you want. Anyway, uh, we're going to make one of these up. So you see, oh, I don't need binding. Why do I think I need binding? Okay. Well, in that case, you can go back in there. As that's pure mandolin, that will smelt back down and be added back into our smeltery, which is quite nice. Uh, we're going to need you, though, and we're going to pick you guys up as well to start building up our little arsenal here of Tinker stuff. Again, I'll clean this chest in a minute. But if we're going to make up the hammer, you see we need those two. Oh, and of course, I'm going to need a hammerhead. Uh, so I somehow managed to forget that. Okay, uh, in that case, we're going to need to make up a... No, we have a hammer pattern. We're going to need the hammerhead tool thing and uh, doing what we did before. So let me go and do that real quick, and then we'll make the hammer and look at the modifiers for it. Okay, finally, we are ready to go uh, to the culmination of this episode, which is making our mandolin hammer. So you can see here the stuff that's going to have uh, very good durability, of course, the cold-blooded and insatiable traits, um, and three modifiers we can put on it. And I'm more excited about the modifiers, really. So what we want to do in terms of the modifiers is we want to grab you out, for example, and we're going to put you in here. We're going to add you along, and we're going to have this. So the mandolin hammer now, if we grab that out a second, put this in here, you see that we have haste. We've got a bonus speed of 20, what is it, 20% right there. Um, and this is our current mining speed. So I'll go and show you guys this in action. If you want more information about the modifiers, of course, uh, where's my Tinker's book gone? I think it must be in here then. Here we go. You can go to the home page and there's a whole section on modifiers. Uh, so for example, if you want luck, um, you need lapis, right? And it tells you how to sort of add that to different things. So that's like your traditional fortune enchantment that you'd have in vanilla Minecraft. Uh, we're gonna maybe put luck on like this pickaxe and use it for the finer items, but the hammer's really for the bulk items when we're making a big sort of mining session. Uh, so if we go down here, I've been doing a little bit of uh, mining around this area using uh, just some stone pickaxes with the vein miner and you can see it's cleared a big area and I'm going to come back and get some of these ores as and when I need them. So that is kind of like useful once you've got a lot of cobble you can just you know vein mine like that. Uh, but this thing if I can get to a patch that isn't uh, gravel you see the speed of this guys and we are rinsing through here and we're going to make these tunnels so easily we're going to get loads of cobble but more importantly we're going to find all these different ores and things to get loads of diamonds and stuff like that so that was kind of the whole point of today's episode i wanted to get that done as i say this started as a stream with splash and i so if you guys want to uh, join those streams and check that out when we're playing along together then there'll be a link in the description there'll be a thing on screen right now if you guys want to see more of this episode a like and a subscribe is the best way to show me your support and it is also in Incredibly appreciated, I really mean that. Uh, but if I know there's a lot of people enjoying it, I will do more episodes. So I'm excited to see how this one goes, and hopefully we can do more episodes. But that is down to you guys. <laughs> so uh, for this particular episode, though, that is about it, guys. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.